Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I'd like to share a few pictures here with you. You know, uh, Chuck and I were talking back in the back room. He's asking me a couple questions. I couldn't hear a thing he was saying. I mean, my, my mind was just on one thing. <laughs> I, 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 just, I can't tell you the joy in my heart right now. Amen. Here's our little girl. <laughs> you know, uh, life takes us on many journeys. It's going to take Mariah on a journey, too. When she was born, I mean, uh, she had a smile that just uh, <laughs> hard to say no to. Uh, Papa, will you do this? Uh, yeah. Another thing that Mariah loved to do, she loved to run. Man, from the time she walked, you would go chasing after her, and everything was excitement for her. Next picture, please. Another thing that she really enjoyed. Uh, uh, guess who that is? <laughs> little sister. Little sister. You know, uh, that's when we went to Noah's Ark. But uh, 12 and, all, and 6. Six years difference. I had a brother that was two years younger than me, and I'm telling you, we would um, duke it out many times. <laughs> had two more brothers, we kind of took it a little easier on them. But, uh, you know, to see my granddaughters putting their arms around one another and uh, little Mer uh, Noel looking up to big sister, uh, I couldn't believe she's already five feet tall. I mean, uh, just uh, unbelievable. I look at her, I look at her today. When I look at her from the back, I say, man, that's not a 12-year-old girl. <laughs> she is big for her age. Uh, this is the family together. Uh, that's when Pastor Rob and family went down the cold, the cold. And uh, Mariah's uh, smiling, mom and dad smiling. Uh, Noel's still learning how. <laughs> but uh, I, folks, I tell you, having family is so special, so special. And to be able to be here and to see your granddaughter being baptized. But I can tell you, I got to baptize Sharon, I got to baptize my older daughter, Carolyn. I got to marry Carolyn, I got to marry Sharon. Special things that you get to do as a pastor. Seeing Rob and Mariah in the water today, I had so many memories flooding back, thinking about this, thinking about that. Just uh, beautiful things. One, next one. Oh, that was the last one. Okay, thank you. We were going to share some more, but I, uh, I thought, well, we'll have Rob put some pictures on there, some things, and we'll take a look at them. <clears throat> One of the things I want to share with you today is, in my mind, when did this all start? I think of January 1975. In January 1975, I made a decision to go to Southern. And um, I took a leave of absence from General Motors and became a student at Southern Missionary College. I remember going in and I had no idea what I wanted to take about myself. Well, you know, uh, 
an advisor came and he started helping me select my classes. And then he started talking about my major. Well, he selected a major for me, but I already had my major. It was called dating. <laughs> In February 1975, one month later, I met my wife. Uh, I can remember watching her cross the, the, the property there at Southern. Boys dorm on one side, the girls dorm on the other side. And you could see out from the windows the girls dorm. And as soon as Susan came walking out, I started running so I could, we could both go up the sidewalk. And when she came to turn like that, I could turn the same time she turned. <laughs> that first time we met was in the cafeteria. After that, we kind of kept coming together again and again. But February 1975 was a very important time for me. Next important time was December 28, 1975. Uh, 11 months later, not quite 11 months, but between semesters, Susan and I got married. And um, I try to remember that date. <laughs> uh, I try to remember cards. But you know, sometimes when you're pastoring and you're out busy and doing this and doing that, sometimes it slips. Now that I'm retired, uh, it's, it's not one of those dates that I wanna skip. Another important date was um, May 5, 1975. That was the day that I walked up the aisle and received my diploma from Southern. Two months later, July 30, 1978, we had our first child, Carolyn. I can remember... Uh, that July, I still had another few weeks to go to finish up school. Um, but on July 30, I got a call to go to uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to do my internship. July 30, I get a call two day, or the day that uh, Carolyn was born. We, about the middle of August, we began our journey from Southern to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, to make a trip like that, just two weeks after you had a baby, to go f several hundred miles, it was quite a challenge for both of us, but especially for Susan. But I can remember uh, uh, her holding that baby, and, and I was driving our moving truck, and uh, one of the other family members was driving our car with Susan and the baby. And uh, August of 1978, I started my pastoral ministry. <clears throat> my heart was so thankful. I found a Christian wife. God blessed me with a little baby girl. And... Um, had a chance to work as a pastor. As I talk about this, I tell you, it just, it, it still amazes me. It amazes me that God gave me the opportunity to be able to work in his church. Um, I've never been able to understand exactly why, but I can tell you this, Thanksgiving for me is every day every day, because I thank the Lord that he gave me the opportunity. In June 1980, I have spent 22 months as an intern. Um, pastor I was interning under dropped out of the ministry, and they kept me an extra 10 months until they found another pastor. But in June 1980, I went to the seminary. March 1981, we had our second daughter. Sharon, I can remember uh, 
Folks, when Susan was carrying the baby, he said, uh, the next one's going to be a boy. The next one's going to be a boy. And uh, I really did. I got excited about that. But, you know, uh, just for a little while, <laughs> I began thinking to myself, you know, it doesn't really matter. If I have a boy or if I have a girl, I really don't care. As long as it has 10 fingers, as long as it has 10 toes, I'll be fine. Well, I'm glad God put that on my heart because we didn't get a boy. <laughs> we got another girl. Um, you know, as I look at the progression, as I look at the things, how God put things in place. My first district, we had a three-bedroom house. We had our bedroom. The girls had their bedroom. And... Uh, the third bedroom was my study. So we had two girls. We could put both girls in one bedroom. God knew that. He made, he made, he crossed all the T's. He dotted all the I's. He put everything in place just the way it needed to be so that I could be the pastor he wanted me to be. <clears throat> Our first two grandchildren um, were baptized what, three years ago? I don't remember the date, but I do remember doing the baptism, being able to go and visit Wisconsin and be there and be able to baptize Preston and Annalise. Such a joy, such a joy. But I can remember uh, the father coming and saying, uh, I wish I could have done that. I wish I could have done that. You know, I look back on it now. I wish he could have done it too. There's something special of getting in the water with your child and being able to be there, watch them go under the water, and bring them up again. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'd like for you to turn with me in the Bible to Luke chapter 2. That's a neat story there. Luke chapter 2. And it begins with verse 25. <clears throat> People were coming. They were bringing their offerings. And the priest was taking those offerings and uh, sacrificing their animals and doing all these different things. But verse 25 Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was a just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is very special, folks. And you know the promise is when you get baptized, you receive the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit before that. Because it's the Holy Spirit that draws you and helps you to want to be baptized. So the Holy Spirit's already there. But God gives us a special measure of his spirit because he knows we're going to need it. When we get baptized, we come under the attack of Satan and his host. He doesn't like those people that commit their hearts, their life to the Lord. So he's going to come at them from every direction to take them away from that. I'm thankful for the promise in John 10, 27, 28. And nobody can snatch them out of my hand. Jesus makes that promise. And the reason he can make that promise is because he gives the Holy Spirit to them once they're baptized. And they have that power to resist Without that power, we don't have the power to resist sin. We don't have that power. It takes the power of God to be able to fight against the devil and his hosts. And so God supplies that power the moment we're baptized. Verse 26, and it was revealed to him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, uh, after so many days, uh, the male child had to be circumcised. And uh, 
that procedure was followed. And then after that was done, he took him up into his arms and he blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation. I tell you, to be able for Simeon to see Jesus and to recognize him as the savior of the world. Wow. Powerful thing. Powerful. I seen with my own eyes thy salvation, which you've prepared before the face. And what's it say after that? All people. Amen. Jesus didn't come just for the Jew. He came for the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, should not perish. You know, there's a perishing world out there today that doesn't know Jesus. And I can tell you, when you get baptized, when you make a commitment to Jesus Christ, one of the things you're called to do is to share that Jesus with others. We miss out on that so many times. And I tell you, if you really want to stay strong in the Lord, share Jesus. Because as you share Jesus with others, it makes you stronger. And it gives you encouragement. <clears throat> My eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles in the glory of thy people, Israel. It's interesting. He's combining both Jews and Gentiles together here. He understands the mission that Jesus is about. I came to seek and to save. I came to seek and to save. Save what? The lost. Christ had one mission. Nothing could deter him to go any direction except for the direction God had called him. You know, God's given us a mission too, hasn't he? If we are to be Christians, what does the word Christian mean? To be Christ-like. Folks, to be like Christ, we have to accept his mission and make that mission our mission. If it's not our mission, we will not be like Christ. To be like Christ is to share Christ with other people to help save the lost. You know, we're told that everybody, when they get to the kingdom, everybody's going to have a star in the crown. Everybody. What's the star represent? Someone that you had a part in, to play in their salvation. And everybody's going to have a star. Some are going to have many stars. Nobody will be in the kingdom. And if you check it out, check it out. Nobody's going to be there without at least one star in the crown. Hmm. It's powerful stuff. Some powerful stuff. But it helps us to know that God is serious about the salvation of people. He's serious. When I think about my granddaughter, I know she's already been a witness, but today she was a special witness. Uh, you got to watch it. You get to see it. For one person to come up and be baptized and nobody else be up there with you, I mean, you're standing alone. <laughs> but in reality, we're all Standing alone. But are we standing on God's side? Or are we standing on the other side? We all get to make that decision. And, and the reality is that God keeps knocking. He says, behold, I stand at the door. Not quite that loud sometimes. But I can tell you, no matter how loud it is, it's going to be loud enough so you can hear it. It'll be loud enough so that you can know that he's knocking. And it'll be loud enough to know that, hey, I want to come in. I want to be in your life. I want to be able to direct you. I want to help you along the way. I want to give you the strength 
to live your life for me. Why don't we open the door? Why don't we? He's Luke 11, verse 13, it says, we have, priest, well, Luke 11, 13. Pastor Rob used this the other week. One of my favorite verses. I have a lot of them, but that's another one. Luke 11, verse 13. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that what? Hmm. Teach your children, teach your children to ask. When you gather around the table, take a little time. Lord, we want to ask for the Holy Spirit right now. How many times should we ask? I'll tell you, as I go through the day, the devil doesn't give up. I mean, if I ask in the morning, sometimes I need to ask at noon. Sometimes I need to ask in the afternoon. Sometimes even have to ask at night. Keep asking because the war keeps raging. The battles keep coming at you, and he's not going to give up. His ultimate goal is to destroy you. And he will if the Holy Spirit isn't in your life. I don't know about you, but every time I forget, I lose. How did I do that again? Why did I do that again? I mean, I've been, there, I've been around this block too many times. Lord, let's stop right now. Hmm. It's a process. Sanctification is what? Work of a lifetime. Some of us go around the bush a little more than others, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is not giving up. Never giving up. Keep coming back again. Lord, I'm here. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for you to come. Thank you. We can get on. Simeon, Simeon saw something that all the prophets of old wanted to see, but they didn't. He got to see it. My parents... Never got to see my children get baptized. My dad died at 66. My mom died. My dad died at 67. My mom died at 66. Next month I'll be 76. I've already seen more years than my parents. And to see what I got to see today, I praise the Lord for that. I would give anything if mom and dad could have seen my children baptized. It's special. It's special. But it also says something else. She wants to be in heaven. She wants to be with Jesus. She wants to have eternal life. Why don't we? Why is it there are so many that they turn their backs to it? You know, November issue of Signs, that very first article that you read in there talks about people and it asks three questions. Do you believe that the Bible is the word of God? Do you believe the Bible is inspired? And it asks another question. I don't remember what the third one was, but you know what? The, do you believe the Bible is the word of God? 25% of the people in America, 25% say the Bible is the word of God. A little more than that said that they believe that the Bible is inspired. Just a little bit more. Then they ask Christians, do you know the percentage between the, the whole country and Christians was almost the same percentage? If you have the November issue of Sign, look at that article. It's an eye-opener. 
I shared this with the prisoners in Pikeville two weeks ago. I read them the, the article, and they're shaking their heads. They said, we can't believe that. We can't believe that. We believe in the Bible. I said, well, here's how you can tell. Here's how you can tell. How can you tell? You can tell by reading it. If you're not reading it, then do you really believe it? If you're reading it, it's going to bring you into a collision course with Jesus himself. And he's got questions to ask. Do you love me? Do you love me? We love to say, Lord, I love you. Yes, I love you. Well, then, what? Keep my commandments. I've tried, Lord. <laughs> I've tried. Luke eleven thirteen will help you. <laughs> Talk with the guys in jail here in Dunlap. I see them almost every Thursday. I didn't go there Thanksgiving, but I try to go there. And you know what's interesting? I was out of there for almost two years, and I go back, and I see a lot of these guys in Walmart, and they're asking me at Walmart, why did you quit coming to the jail? And I said, uh, they didn't let me in during uh, uh, COVID, but then... You have to take an orientation class, and I was sick when they had it, and they only do it once a year, so I wasn't able to do that. So I had to wait another year. The guys that were asking me the question in Walmart are back in jail again. They're back in jail again. My question, hey, I saw you in Walmart. What are you doing back in here? What are you doing back in here? <clears throat> Sin puts us in a prison. I want to get out, don't you? I only know one way to get out. That's through Jesus. And without Jesus, we're going to be in prison. And the penalty is death. But for those that get out, for those that get out, have the promise of eternal life. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Another one of those verses. Starting 1 John chapter 5, starting with verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar because he believes not the record. What's the record? The Bible. The record that God gave his son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Now look at verse 12. Why? Why? You want to talk about something? Here's, here's something you can talk about. Verse 5. He that hath a son. What does he have? He has life. He that hath not the son of God. What's he have? He does not have life. So it's very simple. Jesus is the answer. With Jesus, you get this. Without Jesus, you get that. Verse 13. These things I have written to you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may. What's that next word? No. Do you know you have eternal life? Do you know that? And we're not talking once saved, always saved. That's not what we're talking about. But the Bible does say you can know whether or not you have eternal life. And that you can believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we will have the petitions that we desire of him. I got one of, one of my prayers. One of my prayers was answered today. <laughs> I've been praying that Mariah would be baptized. God answered that prayer today. What are you praying for? What are you praying for? Is there someone 
that you know that you should be praying for that they be baptized. I just wonder today, I just wonder today, I know Rob was saying something there from the water, and I think it's great. But I want to ask again, is there anybody here today, anybody here today who would like to be baptized in the near future? Anybody? Anyone that would like to say, in the near future, I would like to be baptized. I would like to give my life. I'd like to give my heart to the Lord. Anybody like to do that? Okay. I hope we can see more people come and make that decision. Studying this past week with a lady, we we finished lessons 24 and 25. She was an Adventist when she was young, and she had left the church. She'd been out of the church for 40 years. Something happened to the family, and the whole family left the church. And she came to church, and I I saw her, and I met her afterwards, and I said, hey, I would like to ask you something. Are you a visitor? She says, yes. And I said, are you a member here? I said, no. Are you a member of the Adventist church? No. I said, would you be interested in doing Bible studies? Would you be interested? She said, yes. This past Wednesday night, we finished the lessons. December 10, she's getting baptized. She has 39 family members, 39 family members that have been a part of the church. I told her, I said, you know what? You got a job. You got a job. You need to go to your family and invite them all, invite them all to come to your baptism. She's asking them all. Her husband, her husband's not an Adventist. Uh, The last three lessons, or the last three times we visited, we were meeting at the church, but the last three times, I've met her at, at her home. And when I get there, her husband disappears. He goes back in the back room. But uh, we finished it, and he came out. And I said, sir, your wife's getting baptized. Do you have any problems with that? He says, no, I, I support her. I said, you support her? I said, how you support her? He says, well, uh, I support her getting baptized. I said, well, then that means you got to be at church. <laughs> you got to be there and watch her get baptized. I'll do that. I said, okay, are you going to sit on the front row or are you going to sit on the back row? I said, I'd really like for you to sit on the front row because I said, there's going to be some things I'm going to say. And I said, I really want you to be able to hear it. What are you going to say? I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to say before I say it. I'm going to say, would you like to be baptized too? Would you like to be baptized too? He didn't say anything. But he's going to hear it again. (laughs) He's going to hear it again. Last night, Mariah and I talked a little bit. And I told her, I said, you know what? When you get baptized, you're going to touch a lot of people's hearts. Some of them might not be baptized yet. If they're not, maybe you'll encourage them so that they'll be baptized as well. If there's anybody here that's not made that decision, I hope you go out of here thinking about it at least. Thinking about it. If you haven't made the decision, uh, Pastor Rob, myself, we'd be more than happy. There's other people in the church here that could do Bible studies with you as well. But let's work towards one thing. Let's work towards one thing. To seek and to save that which is lost. Thank you, Mariah. You brought a lot of joy to my heart today, and I'm very thankful for the decision you've made. And uh, I pray you'll keep talking to people about Jesus. They will see Jesus in you.
Father in heaven, it's been such a joy to be able to come into your house today. We are so grateful for your presence here today. Thankful to be a witness to uh, Mariah's uh, decision. Lord, I want to ask a special blessing on Mariah today. That your Holy Spirit would hover and cover her completely. That you would encourage her, that you would bless her to know, Lord, that you will never leave her. You will never forsake her. She can call on you, and you'll be there. You'll be there. I pray for those in our church that are still giving thought to that decision, that you would touch their hearts today, that you would help them, Lord, to choose whom they will serve, that they might know, Lord, that you're still waiting, you're still calling, and you want them in your kingdom, but they must choose. They must choose for themselves, and if they choose you, you will give them the power to follow through. So, Father, we, we have another Sabbath together. We have another day to rejoice. We have another day that we can be thankful. We have another day that has passed, and you've not come. Help us to be ready. Help us to be ready. And whenever that day comes, may we be found with the words in our heart, Lo, this is our God. We've waited for him, and he will save us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.